Good day, everyone. Welcome back to our show. I pray that God will give us wisdom once again to have a productive learning experience here at Vet Talks with Doc Athena. Good morning. Today we are going to talk about external parasites of goats, part 3, fleas and flies. This is a guide for animal raisers, students of veterinary medicine and animal science, and basically anyone who is interested in this topic. We are already in part 3 of this series, External Parasites of Goats, and we will be focusing on fleas and flies. Part 1 focused on lice and ticks, while part 2 focused on kids and mice. So part 3, flea and flies. Flies can be further categorized as biting or nuisance flies. Let's start with fleas. The adults are wingless insects that are narrow and compressed on the sides with spines called combs, directed backwards. If you remember in part 1, lice are also wingless flattened ectoparasites, the same with fleas. However, for fleas, their legs are well developed and are utilized to jump great distances. So, they may not be able to fly since they are wingless. However, they can move from one place to another through their well developed legs by jumping with great distances. As compared to lice in part 1, lice depend on contact and foresee to move from one place to another. So since these fleas can jump or can move from one place to another, then they are not considered to be permanent ectoparasites. So most species move a great deal and remain on the host only part of the time to obtain a blood meal. So when they need to suck blood, then that's the only time that they move or jump to the host. The female cat fleas can lay up to 25 eggs per day for a month. And remember, they obtain a blood meal from their host. Therefore, there are cases of severe anemia associated with high numbers of cat flea bites that were reported in domestic animals. Aside from anemia, large populations of this flea can cause ulcers on the head and ears. Therefore, special considerations also in monitoring your herd dogs because they could jump also from dogs to goats. The transmission does not only occur within the goat population or the goat herd, but it could also be from another animal, such as your herd dogs, if they are infested with fleas. Let's look at the photos of cat flea or Tenocephalidus felis on the left and stick tight flea or echidnophaga gallinacea on the right. Both of these are fleas found or reported on goats. Thank you to our sources of these images. Credits given to Domingo Zungri, courtesy of bugguide.net and Pest and Diseases Image Library, bugwood.org, courtesy of University of Georgia. So as you can see in the photos, the spine of Tenocephalus felis is very evident. They call that as combs, technically called as tenija. Also, look at their mouth parts. The proposes of these animals are very irritating to their host as they take their blood meal. 
and you may also notice the well-developed legs which they utilize for jumping. In characterizing the morphology of these fleas, you may also check the length of their bodies and also the curve uh, because they have different appearance of curves with different genus and species. So that's it for fleas. Just a short break, Fox. Did you learn something so far? If yes, please give us a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, clarifications, or anything related to this lecture video, please comment it below. Are you enjoying this free lecture? If yes, please consider subscribing in our YouTube channel and follow us on Docathena Facebook page because through the page, we could communicate better. I do my best to reply to all your comments here in YouTube, but if you want a better communication, then please do follow our Facebook page so that we can have a better form of communication. That's for a short break. Now let's go back to work. Now let's talk about flies. Flies go through complete metamorphosis, which consists of eggs, larvae, pupa, and adults. With each life stage occupying different habitats. Okay, so we have a photo here of the life cycle and I would like to thank our source Credit to Langston University for this illustration of a life cycle of fly. Flies could be biting flies or nuisance flies. And for biting flies, these include horn flies or hematobia irritans, stable flies or stomoxis calcitrans, horse flies or tabanus species, and deer flies or chrysops species and of course the mosquitoes and black flies you can see on the right side the photo of an adult horn fly or the hematobia irritans also below that is the adult stable fly or the stomoxis calcitrans i would like to thank our source of these photos Sometimes you have to check the patterns in the wings of these flies as part of their morphological characteristic. In the lower rightmost part of this slide, you can see the different photos of the common horse and deer flies found around livestock. And I would like to thank also our source, Wright Coburn Grantham courtesy of Oklahoma State University. For chrysops, you may check the patterns on thoracic part as well as for tabanus, you may check also the markings on their abdominal part. You may check also the patterns on their wings and their sizes as well because their sizes differ. Tabanus are very large flies actually. And of course, nuisance flies basically cause annoyance. That's why they're called nuisance. And these include the common house flies, which is the musca domestica, and also blow flies. The photo on the lower leftmost part of this slide shows musca domestica, or the adult house fly. And I would like to thank Jim Callis of University of Nebraska Lincoln for this illustration. So that's all folks for our flies. Now for references, I would like to thank Kaufman, Collar and Butler for the external parasites of sheep and goats from the University of Florida, as well as Justin Tully from the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Fact Sheets from Oklahoma State University. So for summary, the most common external parasites of goats include lice and ticks, which were discussed in part one, mice and kids, which were discussed in part two, and for this part three, we focused on fleas and flies. Again, pediculosis is a chronic dermatitis characterized by constant irritation, 
itching, rubbing, and biting of the hair. For this particular lecture, part 3, we mentioned that fleas could cause severe anemia due to the blood meal of this parasite. They are wingless and usually they only jump or they only reside to the host when they obtain a blood meal. Aside from severe anemia, they may also cause ulcers on the head and ears. And transmission may occur from one host species to another. But most importantly is the observation for the infestation of Tenocephalidus felis, which can lay up to 25 eggs per day for a month. And for the flies, they could be further categorized as biting flies or nuisance flies. So that's all, folks. I hope you learned something from this lecture. I hope to see you again soon. Please keep safe, everyone, and God bless us all. Bye! Thank you for being with us in this episode of Vet Talks with Doc Athena. For those who have not yet subscribed our YouTube channel, please do so. Did you learn something from this lecture? If yes, please hit the like button. If you want to be a part of our social media community and always updated of our new posts or to talk to me directly, you may do so by following our Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. Again, thank you very much. Please keep safe everyone, God bless us all, and I hope to see you again in our next lecture. This is Doc Athena, your country vet.